Hello, and welcome to Anesthesia Clinics part of EduSearch. Uh, today we are going to talk about Regional Anesthesia Drugs Part 3. Uh, for basics, you can check uh, the video on Drugs Part 1 and 2. So here we are going to talk about these drugs which are given in the boxes, which are one of the most commonly used uh, drugs in practice. So we had seen before classification, which is based on esters. We can see that all the commonly used drugs fall in the amide group. That is lignocaine, bupivacaine, levobupivacaine, and ropivacaine. So let's talk about lidocaine or lignocaine. It is an amide local anesthetic. It is also a class 1B antiarrhythmic used for ventricular tachyarrhythmias. It is uh, prepared, formulated as a hydrochloride. A colorless solution, 0.5 to 2%, with or without adrenaline, okay, mostly uh, in 1 in 80 or 1 in 2 lakhs. It's available in 2% gel, 5% ointment, spray, which is delivering 10 milligram per dose, and 4% solution for topical use on mucous membranes, okay. Uh, the one uh, which is used for, uh, as an antiarrhythmic, which is given intravenous, is preservative free. So the, uh, the packaging is different. Okay, the most uh, commonly the local anesthetic uh, is the bottles are different and you have to always read uh, before using. Okay, it is not interchangeable. So the one with preservative is to be used as a local anesthetic while the one which is preservative free is used as an anti for intravenous use. Kinetics, uh, low, uh, Lidocaine is 70% protein bound to alpha-1 acid glycoprotein, metabolized in the liver by dealkylation to monoethyl glycine, that is xylidide and acetaldehyde. The former is further hydrolyzed, while the latter is hydroxylated to 4-hydroxy-2,6-xylidine, forming the main metabolite, which is excreted in the urine. Clearance is reduced in the presence of hepatic or cardiac failure. So you, you may need to alter your doses. Bupivacaine, it's available commonly in 0.25 and 0.5 percentage. Okay. The most commonly used are not available with adrenaline. Okay. 0.5 percent prep preparation containing 80 milligram per ml of glucose. Uh, which we call as bupivacaine heavy, is used for spinal, okay? Um, for more details, you can refer to the talk on spinal anesthesia. Um, this is specifically used. It is used, comes in a vial form uh, in 4 ml, and it is used only for spinal. It is not to be used for any other purpose, okay? The other uh, thing is you comes in a vial, not in an ampoule, and uh, it is usually comes in a 20 ml formulation which is used for local anesthetic. It is very commonly used in epidural infusions for labor and for post-op pain management in all major laparotomies. And uh, it can be used also uh, as an infusion form in peripheral nerve blocks. Uh, the main concern is about cardiac toxicity if it is injected accidentally or inadvertently intravenously or you are giving excessively high doses. Um, the newer drugs, that is ropivacaine and levobupivacaine, uh, have a lesser incidence of cardiac toxicity. Maximum dose is 2 to 3 milligram per kilogram. Uh, the onset of action is intermediate or slow and significantly slower that of lidocaine. Um, also, the duration of action is much more compared to lidocaine. It is most highly protein-bound amide local anesthetic. It is metabolized in the liver by dealkylation to pepecolic acid and pepecolyl xylidine. Levobupivacaine, uh, these are, this is enantiomer, that's S enantiomer of bupivacaine. Uh, there is a lot of isomerism which is present in anesthesia. Many other drugs also have such enantiomers. Uh, presentation and uses, uh, you get in 2.55 and 7.5 milligram per ml. Uses are very similar to bupivacaine. Maximum single dose is 150 milligram and dose over 24 hours is 400 milligram. It has comparatively less toxicity to produce myocardial depression as well as neurological uh, toxicity. It is much, much higher compared to the bupivacaine. Ropivacaine, uh, concentrations available is uh, 
two percent, seven point five and ten milligram uh, per ml. Two volumes. It comes in ten ml or hundred ml, and is a pure S enantiomer. The R enantiomer is less potent and more toxic, so it's not used. It has a propyl group on its piperidine uh, nitrogen. Okay, so the butyl group comes in bupivacin and methylene mepivacin. Uh, differences from bupivacin, it is a pure enantiomeric formulation, so it's improved toxicity profile and lower lipid solubility. Uh, so because of it, it reduced penetration of the large myelinated A uh, beta motor fibers, and they are relatively spared from local anesthetic initially. This drug also takes a little longer time to start acting. Okay, During continuous infusions, smaller degrees of block between uh, a beta and unmyelinated C fibers. It is motor block is slower in onset, less dense, and of shorter duration when compared with bupivacin. Uh, the kinetics uh, metabolized in the liver by aromatic hydroxylation, mainly to 3 hydroxy X002 bupivacin, but also to 4 hydroxy ropivacin. Both have the same local anesthetic activity. So, uh, Prilocaine uh, available in 0.5 to 2% solution and a hyperbaric 2% solution for spinal anesthesia. Uh, you get a 3% solution with feliprasin for dental use. Similar indications to lidocaine and used in situations where you need large volume anesthesia. Maximum dose is 6 milligram or 10 mg per kg when administered with feliprasin. Uh, the 2% hyperbaric spinal preparation is most commonly used, okay, it's available in 2 to 3 ml, where return of motor function is faster compared to bupivacin. It's most rapidly metabolized amide local anesthetic. Metabolism is in liver, kidney, and lung. At large doses, uh, its metabolites or tulidine may precipitate meat hemoglobinemia, which can be treated with ascorbic acid or methylene blue, which are reducing agents. Uh, higher risk in neonates as they're deficient in metabolizing this methemoglobin. Not very commonly used. Uh, the EMLA cream is the only part where I think brylocaine is used in the current practice. Uh, that is eutectic mixture of local anesthetic 5% containing a mixture of crystalline bases of 2.5% lidocaine and 2.5% prilocaine cream. And uh, it is, uh, many times used before, uh, uh, you know, putting an IV access and people who are very sensitive to pain or in small kids, but it has to be applied um, at least half an hour to 45 minutes before. And uh, it, it really doesn't block the deep pain. It will just give you surface anesthesia. Thank you very much.